Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hello, Knife Junkies, and welcome to the Midweek Knife Junkie Podcast, episode number 91. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the show. The Knife Junkie Podcast is the place for knife newbies like myself and knife junkies like you to learn all about knives and knife collecting. The Midweek Show is where we get a chance to uh, take a look at some of the knife stories in the news with our Knife Life News segment. Bob will also have a chance to uh, provide an update on his collection, including some uh, news about the Bastinelli Creations Diagnostic Neck Knife. Can we get a longer title? Uh, (laughs) As well as the Cold Steel XL Luzon, I think is how you you pronounce Mm -hmm. it. Uh, we've got a, a listener line call we want to uh, to hear and uh, uh, have a chance to discuss. And if time permitting, we'll get to uh, some of the uh, the knife shows from our friends at uh, KnifeMagazine.com. So, Bob, a full show again midweek. Never seems to uh, be a lack of stuff to talk about in the knife world. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and actually something that uh, didn't quite make it onto your list, there's there's more to talk about. I know. Well, I was, I was saving that. Oh, snap. <laughs> Um, you know, Jim, I've been trying to sell three knives for a while, um, uh, and and I arrived at the three I wanted to get rid of, and it's three that I find relatively valuable because they're cool knives, and uh, they're great when I have them in hand, but I never carry them, so that was kind of a no-brainer. So I put them up on uh, Blade Forums in one in one posting, and someone came back one to me. One lot. And, yes, exactly. A one lot, like like at an auction, and someone came back to me and said, I'd like to buy them all for this price. And, uh, you know, when I took into account that they'd all be going to the same place, so it was reduced shipping by about 20 bucks, it worked out great. Everyone got a deal, and I was able to unload my Kaiser Compadre, this big, beautiful, two-and-a-quarter-inch uh, recurve Bowie, and uh, the uh, the Wii 609, this big, kind of goofy-looking purple space um, sax, if you will. And then my old CRKT Leong Ma uh, eraser. Such a cool and beautiful knife, but just one I never carry anymore. So got rid of them. Um, I'm, I'm moving some things around. I want to get I want to get a Spartan. I want to get a Spartan Harzi folder. So they don't come for free, I'm seeing. So is that Spartan Harzi folder a before blade or during blade? Oh, Oh, and, I, and, an interesting question you raise, actually, because uh, at, when we were talking to Stasa23 on the show, uh, we were talking about going to Blade and, and how he said, uh, right about now, you start seeing people selling off their knives to save up for Blade. This will be my first year, your first year, the Knife Junkie first year at Blade Show. And, uh, you know, I, I hadn't really taken that into account. I've been thinking about, you know, buying hotel, buying uh uh, food and and flight and and all of that and logistics and what we're going to do when we're there. But I hadn't thought about the actual knife buying part. And you mm. can't go and not get one. So, hmm, you raise an interesting point. Maybe um maybe some more knife lots going up by the knife junkie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> maybe I need to take a a more stern look at what I carry and mm. and what I want. And or or maybe I just slow down and and remain satisfied with what I have. Well, you you raise an interesting criteria. You, you know, as your collection evolves, you know, you were buying stuff because you liked it, and now it's kind of gotten to where it's more about what you want to be able to carry, as opposed to just having it in the knife drawer or on the shelf, or whatever to look at. You want to be able to carry it and use it. So that's that's your criteria now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're all uh, uh, I can carry all of them, but. But uh, you're right. At the at the end of the day, there are certain things that uh, I'm just going to keep going back for. So why not why not collect to that strength and and have my money, right. you know, until I open up the Demarco uh, Knife Museum and I have to get one of each, you know, like Noah, or I guess he had two of each. That sounds even better. Uh, I'll just kind of start culling and getting some some better stuff. Well, we'll we'll give you four or five years before we open up the museum. And and I, <laughs> thank you. And I have to, I do have to clarify by saying better stuff. I mean, it's better inherently if I'm using it and carrying it than if I'm not. I'm not talking about quality. Everything I sold to this gentleman is super high quality. 
Yeah. Well, you know, and what you were saying, too, about carrying it, it's, it's the same thing. It's not that it's not a great knife, not that you don't love it, but taste evolve, taste change. So just the things you naturally gravitate to is what you're wanting to carry in your pocket. Your right front pocket, your left front pocket, your waistband, your neck knife. So <laughs> there you go. You've got enough choices. Right. There are good odds there. There will, you know, it will get carried at some point. So anyway, Bob sells off some knives. We'll see what he replaces it with and how quickly. <laughs> You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. It's time now for the latest Knife Life news. The latest two releases from Civivi look quite interesting to me. The first one has an interesting name, Jim, and I'm not exactly sure how they're pronouncing it, but it looks like Asticus to me. Asticus. Kind of an interesting name. It sounds like it could either be from, you know, Roman times or something else. Asticus. Anyway, um, it's a new uh, flipper from Civivi, and it is beautiful. I, I love the way it looks. It's got it. It's a, a drop point, and it's got a nice hollow ground bl uh, blade with a sweat. A long swedge on top and a, a nice finger choil, but that is a 3.8 inch blade. You know, I like the longer blades and uh, this is the biggest thing uh, Civivi has done. You know, we has done a lot of large knives, but this is the first thing from them that's large. It's an in-house design, D2 steel, uh, flipper only, ball bearing, you know, the, the usual, I got to say, uh, G10 insert. And multiple colors. The cool thing about the insert is that it's letterboxed uh, by the stainless steel frame behind it. So the frame sits slightly proud, if you will, and uh, it it looks really beautiful. And I know just from holding other knives that have that sort of um, that sort of letterbox effect with a, a handle scale, it is very comfortable. It kind of rounds out the knife without thickening it and having to contour it. So uh, you get a nice uh, visual effect. You get a nice ergonomic effect. So um, got to say, just for where my tastes are going, I haven't uh, really gotten any Civivis, even though I find them very attractive and I know that they're awesome knives. This one is kind of looking like it's up my alley. So this this might be something I go for. Uh, it's a, a $65 knife, which is another reason for me to go for it. And uh, they are going to do a sort of upscale version of it. Uh, but it's only kind of slightly upscale. They're going to have Damascus instead of D2, and they're going to have carbon fiber overlaid uh, G10 scales, kind of uh, a la Spyderco. And uh, that one will be 90 bucks. Uh, the other release from Civivi is one that we saw here a few months back, Jim. It, uh, in that stage, it was still a prototype, and it was unnamed, but it's a small, actually tiny is how they describe it, uh, fixed blade EDC uh, meant for pocket wear or or neck carry by Alessandro DeSantis. And uh, it's it was this little Kiridashi looking thing. You might remember 9CR18 MOV with a bottle opener on the spine. Well, they named it and it's now called the Kiri-EDC, like Kiridashi because it's Kiridashi shaped blade, but instead it's the Kiri edc Cute. Doesn't exactly roll off my tongue, but neither does Asticus. So, uh, you know, Civivi, great at making knives. Great at designing and making knives. Uh, the names, maybe maybe that's where they have to work on it. <laughs> yeah, maybe not so much there. <laughs> yeah. All right. And Civivi is the, the budget line of we? Yes. All right. All right. And, uh, and you know, as... as, uh, as we were speaking with Stasa recently. He just, man, he loves Civivi. So does uh, Zell, frequent contributor to uh, Thursday Night Knives. Zellrick42 loves Civivi. And um, I guess I just have to get my hands on one. And this right. uh, Asticus <laughs> looks like the one I want to get my hands on. Right. That sounds funny. Yeah. Oh, okay. I won't touch that one. I, yeah. I just caught that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The Asticus. The Asticus. <laughs> yeah. All okay. Right. All right. Moving on quickly. Yes. Hey, uh, moving from that, we'll go to uh, Bone Daddy Blade Works. Let's talk about a uh, an axe like product coming out yeah. from the from the new, from the new folks there. That is uh, that is how how I'm describing it. Looking at it, it's pretty cool. You know, it's grown on me. Uh, just in looking at it, I haven't I haven't seen one of these. It's a a new outfit called Bone Daddy Blade Works. It's a new uh, design and knife making house uh, doing small batch productions. And they got this knife-like axe head or axe head-like knife thing uh, called the Axis, A-X-X-I-S. 
And it is very interesting. It is a, it looks like a pretty large chunk of steel, uh, large in width, but it has been skeletonized massively, aggressively. And uh, the surfaces are also treated in such a way that either grooves are cut out, very attractive grooves, or sort of dimple patterns, all these things to lighten up this strangely shaped knife thing. So it's a, it's a survival knife. But you can tie it to, um, or you can lash it to a limb and make an axe out of it. So it's got a very uh, sort of wedge-like uh, geometry to it, and it's got uh, a blade on the bottom where the traditional, where the beard of a traditional axe would be, and then a blade uh, facing forward. So it looks kind of almost like a tanto or a gram razel, if you will, a fixed giant slab of gram razel. Anyway, this is a pretty neat looking thing, uh, uh, double edged, as I said. It's D2, it's five and th- uh, 5.3 inches of cutting edge, including both the, the beard blade side and the forward blade side. And uh, you can use it as a knife, you can use it as an axe, and it's got Kydex. It's a little heavy at 14.3 ounces, but like I said, it's, it's an axe knife. So, right. it's, you know, it's going to be heavy. It's a knife with a capital, capital N. Uh, it's uh, on, on Kickstarter right now, and they're they're seeking funding, and uh, they're looking. Uh, it's going to end by the twenty sixth of March. They're looking for fifty five grand. Looks like a cool project, I got to say. Bone Daddy Blade Works. That's W E R X. So as Bob said, uh, March twenty sixth, uh, kind of the end of the month. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Maybe uh, maybe put a note in our uh, books to uh, revisit that uh, around that time to see how they did and so, see how it's going. One final story in Knife Life News we want to get to, and I always have trouble with this one, uh, Essie? Essie. Essie Knives? Essie. Okay, E-S-E-E. Yeah. Okay. So they have a an interesting line. Essie is is known for their um, outdoor blades, bushcraft, camping, you know, pretty hardcore outdoor survival and, and uh, outdoor adventure blades. And uh, they have a line called the Expat Series. And expat is actually the the handle of someone on uh, the SE forums who has been a contributor in in a lot of different ways over the years, and uh, including designs. Uh, so SE started making a line of this this gentleman expat's designs. I'm I'm assuming he's a gentleman, could be a woman, but uh, in any case, they have this new one uh, coming out, and it's it's half knife, half uh, machete. It's it's sort of a short machete, large knife at 12.38 inches and uh it's it's got a beautifully shaped it looks like a spade blade as they say on knife news but really you look at this machete it's got a a drop point uh almost looks like a clip point and a long straight and a beautiful belly up towards that point and it really does look like a a large spade blade from a from a stockman slip joint knife anyway uh it's uh 0.094 thick so you can you can use it for hefty jobs, but it's also uh, it's also pretty agile, uh, apparently. Uh, it's made by a partner company of Essie's in El Salvador, which is kind of like Condor. Well, not kind of like Condor. That's where Condor is located, so that made me think of Condor immediately. Uh, 1075 with a con- convex grind. And uh, I don't know if you remember this about me, Jim, but I, I love a convex grind. I can't say that I remembered that, <laughs> but I, I thank you for letting me know. Oh, Jim, what has happened? I got to get better on my grinds. Yeah, yeah. Step by step, Bob. I'll get there. Well, the convex grinds are are very uh, robust because you can get them super, super sharp, uh, but they're rounded right towards uh, the tip. So you have also you have sort of the performance of an axe or the stoutness of an axe, but you can get them incredibly uh, keen too. Anyway, uh, canvas micarta handles, canvas sheath, which I think is cool. That's kind of a throwback to sort of World War II era machetes, and. Uh, yeah, I just think it's cool. There, here's a guy, uh, here's a person who's a total enthusiast for uh, SE knives, and uh, they they took on his designs, took them seriously, and he's got a whole line of knives with them now. This must be the show for for big knives with the SE and the axe that you just talked about. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, maybe maybe I need to get in with uh, I, I need to start haunting uh, the Cold Steel forums and see if they'll they'll make one of my crazy ideas, the the pit fighting gauntlet, perhaps. Perhaps. You never know till you ask. <laughs> yeah. What can they say? No. Lynn Thompson, I'm sure, would come up with a great way to justify it. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. 
Back on the Knife Junkie podcast, it's time for the collection update from Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Where do you want to start, Bastinelli or Cold Steel? Well, uh, let's start with Cold Steel. I got that first, I guess. Um, oh, yeah. So well, I, not alphabetical order. No, and, <laughs> <laughs> and not in the order I gave it to you. But, uh, you know, we're, we're whimsical here, the Knife Junkie podcast. So I recently uh, had an Amazon uh, order, you know, as one does. Uh, and uh, it was a bunch of uh, very practical stuff. But I did notice that the Cold Steel Extra Large Luzon could be had for 38 bucks at that moment. And um, a, a wave of justification hit me. And I can't remember exactly what it was, but it probably had to do with, um, I, I, I don't even know how I justified it. I just threw it on there, 38 bucks. It's a leap year, Bob. It's a leap year. That's a great one. That's a there great one. <laughs> Thank you, man. I'm going to use that for the rest of the year. If that's it, you can. <laughs> <laughs> this thing, this this Luzon is is a pretty cool knife. I got to say, it's it's it is one of the big ridiculous cold steel knives. So if that bores you, you know, you're going to have to suffer through this for just a moment, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, but yeah, it it is this very large, grivery handled beast, and I tell you, it's very strange to have a cold steel that is a liner lock. And uh, this is a pretty robust liner lock. It it, it is taking in uh, it is taking a little bit of time to break in, but I got to say this thing is amazing. Now, if anyone is on the fence, if anyone who is a reasonable individual like myself and collects these giant cold steel knives, and you think eh, it's got eight CR thirteen MOV, maybe I'll pass on this one. Well, brother, I get you. That's where I was for a couple of years now. But then it occurred to me, really, it doesn't matter what steel this has. Because, uh, you know, chances are I'm not going to really use it. Uh, I have a couple of other large cold steels I use for yard stuff. Uh, this won't get used that way. So if I ever need it, I'm quite sure the 8CR13 MOV will, will do me just fine. Because this is a big folding fighting knife. And I don't use those. So the cheaper steel, the softer steel is 100% acceptable. And it makes it a little bit more affordable. Well, sounds like a great price, and I'm glad we were able to help you justify it there. Thank you. It's research. You're more than welcome. That's right. There you go. Video, I am assuming, coming up on the YouTube channel at some point. Yeah, yeah, because uh, since I put up my uh, uh, video of cold steel folders, I've gotten two more, uh, which was unexpected. But oh, Gosh. I know. No. An updated collection video. I know. An updated, updated, update. Right. All right, so we go from uh, big knives, big axe, big cold steel down to a little neck knife yeah that's new in the collection tiny tiny neck knife uh inspired by my wife who wanted to carry a karambit when she was running something she could just kind of grip in her fist and have looped over her finger so that you know it, it can't be seen and but it's there and it's handy and uh i i loaned her my uh fox 599 karambit which is a relatively small karambit and it, it wasn't wasn't doing it for her, a little too noticeable and big. And so I thought about Bastinelli. They have all these cool little knifey, sharp claw type things, tons of different beautiful karambits and, and fixed blade and uh, folding knives uh, that, that he designs. And uh, so I got, I got her this uh, little, it's called the Diagnostic Neck Knife. And what it is, is a two-finger karambit. And uh, so far, I have find uh, I have found it not as easy on the ring finger coming out the uh, bottom of my fist, but it feels great in hand on my, you know, flip off on, on my bird finger, if you will, and right. and uh, and gripped that way. Um, this is a a really interesting uh, little knife. It reminds me of some of the little uh, ring claws that uh, Guru Danny Nosanto has brought to different seminars I've been to where he shows all these really cool kind of uh, covert traditional Filipino and um, and uh, Indonesian weapons. And they look kind of like this. They're like little little animal claws that fit neatly into your hand just in case you're jogging through the park and someone menaces you, you know. So, yeah, I got one for my wife and I guess I had to get one for myself because I, I didn't want to be hogging it from her, but I, I wanted to be able to to uh, to review it. And, and discuss it. So I had to have one for my own. So got one and it's awesome. 
I was going to say, so you're not hogging it. I am not. You, no, you no. actually got you actually got two. But did you notice how I framed the conversation? It was about my wife and my wife's knife for jogging, but it also helped me out uh, to do. A little I, I I did notice that totally. I did, and I was going to ask you if it was your wife's knife. Why do you still have it in your hand? So I'm glad. I'm glad you clarified. Well, by she saying has you got a second one. She has yeah, hers. Okay, very good. This might be the new one to ride behind the old. Uh, your work ID. We'll see about that, though. Oh, okay. And does she does she like it, or is it too early to tell? Has she had enough chance to use it? She has not. It just they just arrived. So, uh, but she's hefted it and likes the way it feels. And she's got small hands. It feels good in her small hands. Very good. Collection update there from the knife junkie. We'll uh, we'll see how many more uh, weeks we have multiple knives to talk about. If he can keep this pace going for a while, we'll uh, we'll wait till next week and see what's uh, going on with the collection there. Have a question or maybe you just have a comment? Give us a call at 724-466-4487. We'll answer your question on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. That number again, 724-466-4487. All right, Knife Junkies, don't forget, we would love to hear from you. Get your feedback, your comments, your questions, your thoughts. Give us a call on the listener line at 724-466-4487. 724-466-4487. And that's what the gentleman that we're going to play a message from did. He called the listener line, left us a message. Unfortunately, didn't leave his name or anything, so we you know can't give him credit or uh, you know get back with him that way. But uh, hopefully, he's listening to the podcast. We wanted to uh, to play it and and give the knife junkie a chance to uh, comment on it. Kind of set it up, Bob. The 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 call is about. Strider knives and stolen valor. Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, a gentleman um, left a message um, cons- complimenting the show. It, his tone was was really you know very complimentary. Uh, uh, it was a nice letter, but he was uh, responding to my recent bloviating about uh, about my new Strider SN- SMF and how excited I am about it, how much I love it, and he stated that it's very, very hard for him or impossible for him to support uh, the work of people um, who's, who he, he has problems with. And, and well, I'll let, I'll let him, him talk about it, and then I'll, I'll give you my initial reaction. But I, I have to say I haven't thought 100% through how I feel about it, but I'm really happy this, uh, this gentleman called in. And I like when there are actual things to talk about in this hobby, in this in this uh, realm of enthusiasm and not just look at this cool new knife, look at this cool new knife. This is an interesting thing to ponder. Well, let's uh, let's listen to that and then we'll come back and hear from the Knife Junkie. Hey, what's up, guys? Enjoying the podcast. Just ran over, er, ran out and found it and uh, really good content that you guys have. Hey, man, just want to express my concerns with uh, Strider in general, with the history of the company, especially Mick Strider with stolen valor and being arrested for carjacking and all that nonsense. I just can't seem to support a company like that. And so uh, just hoping that you would actually support people who truly served, um, who truly spoke honestly about what they did when they were serving. There's a lot of other knife companies out there that do that, man. So again, great show, enjoying it very much, but I'm just out. No way would I support uh, Strider Knives in any way. All right, guys, take care. All right, so, Bob, we've we've heard the message. Um, your initial thoughts, your initial reaction. Well, my, my initial feeling is uh, this is obviously coming from someone uh, to whom this is important, someone who served himself maybe or someone uh, who has someone close who's serving. The, the point is this obviously is coming from somewhere – deep and you know everyone needs a code of ethics but that that code of ethics is oftentimes personalized by your own experiences and by you know how you were raised and and um from my perspective this is my perspective uh, i came up uh, as an artist and going to art school and pondering the behavior of uh of many different artists and 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 then contrasting that with their work um Caravaggio, one of my favorite painters of all time, you know, murdered someone and then got back in the good graces of the church by making a painting. And I always kind of thought, huh, that, you know, most beautiful paintings in the world, character 
you know, I'm not so sure about this guy's character. How does that make me feel about the art? It doesn't make me, it doesn't change my feeling about his paintings. And uh, I, I, I flash forward to my favorite movie made by a man named Roman Polanski, who by all accounts is, uh, you know, <laughs> a bit of a scumbag. And, uh, but he made a great movie. And I love Chinatown. Does what Roman Polanski did change how I feel about Chinatown? I, I, it doesn't. It doesn't. And that's sometimes I think if I were more principled, maybe it would. Uh, but in this case, it does not. Maybe it's just not personal enough for me. So I hear, um, I hear what this gentleman is saying about Mick Strider and how, and, and, uh, Strider knives and why he can't support them. And, uh, I admire that and I respect that. It is not where I stand at the moment. And, and frankly, and to be totally honest, I'm not sure if that's due to, uh, an ethical stance or just because I absolutely love the knife and I'm willing to, uh, you know, justify how I feel about it. Or, or I, I, mm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, every you know, there's a, a phrase. Uh, one of my former bosses used to say, "Where you sit depends on where you stand." So you know, you have your own perspectives, your own history. Um, you know, whether you grew up in the military, maybe you have military family, military friends. You went to art school, so you understand art, the appreciation of art. It's all different. You have your own perspective. So to each his own, I, like you, I admire and respect this gentleman's opinion. I admire and respect your opinion. You know, I, I appreciate him sharing the message and getting this conversation started. Yeah. And I would definitely like to invite listeners to give a call to the listener line and let us know their thoughts, kind of how how it affects them or how they feel about yeah. it. Yeah. And and actually, this this raises up the, the real the whole reason for being uh, this podcast, uh, I set out to talk to all the people that I admire and respect and uh, have something to say in the knife world. I would, I've would i sent out a couple of invitations to Mick Strider. I'd love to have him on the show, uh, not only to you know meet and talk to this very uh, storied uh, and accomplished legacy knife maker, but also, you know, I'd love to, to at least allow people to talk freely about their side of things. Who knows, you know? Just an opportunity to have conversation and find out where where everyone's coming from. Well, and I want to expand or clarify on something you said. This podcast is not not just to talk to the people you admire and respect and want to meet. It, it's to talk to anybody in the knife world, any different opinions, any different kind of things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like the show we did with uh, what Super Steel Steve. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm the first to admit I'm not. My mind doesn't think steels and mathematics and chemistry and all that. So. You know, and I think, we, you know, we had a comment, you know, that says, you know, after that show is like interesting, the, the, the host and the co-host, you know, don't like steals or yeah. can't talk steals. But, yeah, they're, they're the host of this yeah. podcast. OK, fine. You know, I respect that. It's just not one of my strengths, but it's still we want to be able to talk to people in the knife world, regardless of where they're coming uh, from. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole point. I, you know what I know could fill a thimble. I just know what I like. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Well, again, if you. uh have a thought or an opinion, we would love to hear from you. Keep the conversation going, 724-466-4487. And also uh, join Bob on his Thursday Night, Knive, uh, Thursday Night Knives live video show. We have the opportunity for you to actually come on the show. If you have a webcam and a microphone, uh, you can come on and uh, talk to him, ask him a question, uh, get some interchange going on there. And I want to plug this opportunity. Bob mentioned selling a few knives. On Thursday Night Knives, uh, we're going to be able to, you're going to be able to have the opportunity to sell a knife. So if you have a knife you want to sell to raise some funds for Blade Show coming up, well, uh, just come on Thursday Night Knives. We'll be more than happy to let you come on, show off your knife, talk about it, and uh, try to sell it. No commission, no charge, just a, a service from the Knife Junkie to the Knife Community. Subscribe to the Knife Junkie's YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. All right, Bob, back on the Knife Junkie podcast, our midweek episode number 91. Kind of as I thought, we had a lot to try to tackle, so we're not going to be able to run through all the list of uh, knife shows, but uh, March is the time where a lot of shows kind of start kicking back up into high gear, some hammer ends coming on. Uh, you know, we've got shows in North Carolina, Arkansas, uh, Massachusetts, down in Georgia. Uh, so if you want to uh, find all those Events, go to see our friends at knifemagazine.com slash events, 
and you can find uh, a list of all the shows going on. Bob, as we wrap up, any final thought? Uh, something I hadn't asked you, something you want to talk about, or just uh, no, kind of wrap it up? No, first? I was just going to plug Thursday Night Knives tomorrow night. Definitely come check it out. I should have uh, Zelric42 tomorrow night on Thursday Night Knives. And uh, come enjoy and uh, be a part of the conversation. All right. For Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie Person. Thanks so much for joining us on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.